Okay, let's talk about chromosomes. I'm pretty sure you've heard about this word before, the word chromosomes. And a lot of time when you think about chromosomes, you're thinking about, oh, it's my DNA. And you're right, you're right. But chromosomes, kind of entitled, when you usually, usually say the name chromosome, uh, it means that there's, it's more to that. So chromosomes are, yes, your DNA strands, but also some type of associated proteins, okay? And these proteins are called histones. So whenever you hear the word chromosomes, they're not only referring, and technically, they're not really referring just about the DNA, but it's the combination of DNA with proteins. And these proteins are called histone proteins. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna help this DNA uh, kind of be folded in a way that it fits in the nucleus, okay? Because DNA is humongous. If you put this as a line, it's gonna be really it's like several yards long. So how do you make, especially us humans, we have 46 chromosomes. How do you make it fit into a nucleus? You need to have a lot of proteins, a lot of histones to wrap around this DNA so it fits into the, into the nucleus. Now, usually you also call this chromatin. So chromatin is the same thing. It's DNA, okay, plus is histone proteins. The big difference between chromosome and chromatin, so technically chromosome is chromatin, okay? The difference really is, is chromatin, when it's in the form of chromatin, it's a little bit more loose. So usually around interface. Think about interface, we're talking about the G1 stage where, um, uh, the cell is doing its cellular activities, right? The DNA is being used. We need to use the DNA. We need to make proteins all the time. We need to be doing enzymes all the time. So chromatin is more like a loose structure of DNA with proteins, but it's the same thing, okay? Chromatin is also DNA with proteins. However, when we about, when, when the cell is about to go through cell division, and it's going to divide, what happens to the DNA, the, the protein, so what happens to this chromatin, is to become way and way and way and way more denser. It denses up, it becomes very condensed, and that is what we call a chromosome. So technically, a chromosome is just a more dense, more compacted uh, type of chromatin. Now, during interface, the DNA is active, like I was saying, and the chromosomes are usually unwound. They're usually found as chromatin, okay? When DNA is to be replicated, then the chromosomes are gonna be tightly bound, wound like a ball of string. And here's what we kind of refer to as a chromosome, okay? But again, technically, chromosomes and chromatin is very, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay? It's just chromosome is a more condensed, more tightly wound um, form of a DNA chromatin. This is what I was talking about. Now, DNA is really, really long, right? And it's humongous. And it has to be coiled and folded several times. It's going to enable a rather long molecule up to six feet sometimes to be packaged in the small nucleus. So how do we package the DNA? DNA is gonna be packaged or be folded around proteins called histones, the proteins. And these proteins are for pretty much for folding, okay? For folding the DNA. As it goes, it gets twisted and twisted and twisted, makes different types of forms. But again, also with the DNA, with the helix, so our DNA with the histones, with these proteins, making this thing called a chromatin, okay? And eventually this chromatin is gonna get denser and denser and denser and denser as we are gonna go, as the cells gonna go through cell division. Um, as, as, this, as, this, as this DNA, okay, gets denser and it gets folded and folded and folded and folded because we're about to go to cell division, then it becomes into a chromosome. And a chromosome is just a very, very, very dense network of, of uh, DNA, okay, with associated proteins called histones, all really, really, really uh, tightly wound, tightly folded. Now, and this is 
almost like a repetition of what I talked before as I was going through the cell cycle and I was going through the S phase. Now let's see it here without the cells, just so you understand, okay, how these chromosomes are duplicated and separated. So in preparation for mitosis, DNA, your genetic material is replicated. The result of this replication are two sister chromatids, okay? Two copies of the DNA. Now, this is gonna happen, okay, when this is replicated in the S phase of interface. The sister chromatids are gonna be joined at the center, somewhere called the centromere, okay? It's a structure in the middle, which, Again, holds both sister chromatids together. And during mitosis, the sister chromatids are gonna be separated, okay? And they're gonna be distributed to the other cells. So one sister chromatid is gonna stay in one cell, the other sister chromatid is gonna stay at the other cell. Let's look at the picture here. This is one chromosome, one chromosome. And this is, comes from the parent cell, okay? Now, this parent cell has gone through G1 phase. It's going to go now to the S phase because this cell is about to divide. So this cell, this chromosome needs to be duplicated. We need to make another copy of this chromosome, of this DNA. Chromosome du uh, duplication goes to the S phase. What happens in DNA replication? We're just going to make another copy of this chromosome. And this is what it looks like this and this, now we have two copies, okay? This is still one chromosome, ladies and gents. Still one chromosome, okay? Why? Because it's gonna have something called a centromere. There's one centromere here, okay? And the centromere is gonna be used to count chromosome, chromosome number. So you have one chromosome, two sister chromatids. Why do you have two sister chromatids? It's important that you understand that when you hear sister chromatids, <clears throat> it means that we have gone through the S phase already because now we have two copies of the DNA. As the two cells are formed, as the two cells need to have their own genetic information, now we're gonna be splitting, and let me do this again as a line, and let me do a different color. What's gonna happen to this chromosome here Okay, there you go. Okay, the sister chromatids are gonna separate and they're gonna become <clears throat> two different chromosomes. So now you have two cells, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's gonna be a daughter cell, there's gonna be another daughter cell, okay? Each of them having one copy of the DNA, okay? So there's gonna be one chromosome and it's gonna be another chromosome. Okay, each daughter cell having the same genetic makeup, the same DNA, okay, as that of the parent cell. Please make sure that makes sense. Okay. All we did here is just split the two sister chromatids. And when the two sister chromatids get split, now we call them separate chromosomes. Mitosis and cytokinesis <clears throat> after interface, and that's kind of the big topic. Now, from now on, we're going to be talking about mitosis, and then we'll talk about meiosis. So, mitosis and cytokinesis <clears throat> after interface. The genetic material must be divided so that the cell division can occur, and this is what happens in the S phase. Okay, um, in the M phase, the M phase of mitosis includes mitosis or the mitotic phase. The M phase has two different phases. Like I said before, it has the phase of mitosis. Here we do the division of the nuclear contents into two, mostly the division of chromosomes. And two, cytokinesis. Cytokinesis has to do with the division of the cytoplasm into two. Cytoplasm, um, 
as well as organelles. So we can make two cells.